are a million gurus telling you one thing and then two million more telling you something else. With so much contradicting information, it can be hard to figure out what actually has value, what works, what doesn't, who you should listen to, and how you can get the success that you deserve. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you nothing but proven facts that I have learned by running Facebook ads for over a decade, spending hundreds of millions of dollars and driving billions of dollars in revenue. These are not my subjective takes. These are the things that we know as fact, based on how this software was written, based on how businesses operate, scientific principles going back hundreds of years, and economic principles going back thousands. These are non-arguable points and will ultimately be the foundation of what you need to make Facebook successful, make it easy, and ultimately get you hours of your life back while putting more money in your pocket so you can spend more time with your family and enjoy the quality of life and provide opportunity for other people. This is not how to raise your ROAS. This is not how to get rich quick. This is not how to hack the platform. This is how to use a tool properly to improve your quality of life and create opportunities for others. First things first, we need to define what success means for our business. When it comes to e-commerce, that success is ultimately defined at acquiring profitable customer journeys. So let's focus on the thing that everybody says you're supposed to care about that actually doesn't mean anything, ROAS. Now, definition of ROAS is return on ad spend. But let's break this down for a minute because by the end of this, you're never gonna let anybody trick you into thinking that it's important ever again. And you'll also be able to go to anybody that says it is important and shut them down quickly. And most importantly, if you've hired somebody to run your ads for you, you're gonna know that there are either people that understand that ROAS is complete bullshit, or you know that they're not people that you should ever work with again because they don't know how business works. And ultimately the future of your business is completely predicated on them knowing what to do with your money. So first thing, what is ROAS? ROAS is attributed revenue divided by spend. Okay, this is ultimately a fraction, right? A fraction is a numerator on top divided by the denominator, the number on the bottom. So where does this break down? Well, the numerator is attributed revenue, all right? Is the attribution something that we trust? Do we know that we're getting 100% tracking on all the sales? No, okay. Is the revenue 100%? Do we see all the revenue? Or more importantly, is that revenue only from that channel? No, okay. So the numerator is tracking that we can't trust that ultimately gives us a number that we know isn't accurate. Well, is it relative day to day? No. Is it reliable in that you cannot manipulate it? Of course not. So what you're telling me is the numerator, the top number in the fraction is a total count that is off of transactions and how much those transactions are worth, but we also know what those transactions are worth is neither accurate nor predictive of future behavior, and it's not inclusive of revenue, and it's not incremental. So sometimes the ROAS of Facebook includes revenue for, that would be shown in the ROAS of Google that also shows money that's attributed to revenue on email. So the top half of that fraction is a number that ultimately we know isn't accurate, is not fully inclusive, and is not predictive. Okay, well at least we know the spend is accurate, but it isn't. Is it the spend on that ad, that ad set, that campaign, that platform for today, this week, this month? My point here is if your retargeting campaign gets a row as of three today, how much money did you spend to put somebody into that retargeting campaign? If your retargeting campaign's a three, but it costs you a thousand dollars to get somebody there, are you really making enough money? Also, how much money did you spend not on Facebook? How much money did you spend on Google or TikTok or against influencers to get somebody to take that action when they saw that Facebook ad? The ad spend or the ad set spend or the campaign spend that day, that week, that month is by no means holistic for that customer journey because also customer journeys last decades. So the denominator lacks context and is also not close to accurate. So ROAS is ultimately a number that we know isn't true divided by a number that isn't accurate. If the purpose of data is to help you make decisions. Do you want to make decisions dividing a number that is a complete lie by another number that is completely inaccurate and lacks context? Does that make any sense? Because where I'm sitting, that makes no sense at all. And I know you love these types of videos, but sadly YouTube only has a like button. So go ahead, take a moment, smash that button enthusiastically. Show your love. It's, it's, it's right down, I think right there. Hit that button, right? 
And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any other videos. With that being said, let's get back to it. So the point here is we can't define success as ROAS. We have to define it by a real metric. So the metric we want to use to define our success is simple. It's blended CPA. Across your entire business today, this week, this month, how much did it cost to get a transaction? How much money out versus how many transactions did you get in? And ultimately those transactions have a different AOV and ultimately every customer journey that you buy has a different LTV. But generally, first transaction transactions are going to have an AOV that's more or less steady and the LTV is going to be more or less projectable. So if you know that basically every transaction more or less costs 50 bucks and you know every transaction more or less is worth 85, then your blended CPA says on a daily basis, every transaction you make gives you $35 profit. Just make more transactions. You'll make more money. That's fairly simple. And that goes into PSM, right? That's LTV divided by the sum of CPA and COGS times the number of times somebody buys. The point is blended CPA is infinitely more valuable than new customer CPA. Because what's new customer CPA? Well, how much does it cost to get a new customer? Okay, but if you're only focusing on new customers, but you don't work on LTV, how valuable is it? And if you do work on LTV because you're getting multiple transactions, wouldn't you want to focus on improving the number of transactions that you get and ultimately the lifetime value of every single customer? It would behoove you and be so much more beneficial to your bank account to get more customers to buy a second time than to get more customers to buy once. Unless you're not interested in future cash flow and profitability and the success of the business. If you're an ad agency that only pretends to know what they're doing and says the path to success is acquiring as many new customers as possible, then of course, you're not interested in the business success of your client. So I said, if somebody's focused on NCPA or somebody's focused on ROAS, it means they don't understand business. NCPA, new customer cost for acquisition, only really matters if you have like a 90% second purchase rate or only really matters if like 90% of people, 95% of people buy or don't buy. Like if only 2% of people ever buy from you a second time, don't worry about the cost per acquisition because basically everybody's a new customer anyway. And if 95% of people buy a second or a third time and your LTV is a huge magnifier, then yeah, just go start as many customer journeys as possible. But the odds are you're not anywhere close to any of those numbers. So just try to get more sales at a profit that ensures future cash flow. That's success. And what's MER? And side note, for those of you saying, yeah, we don't use ROAS, we use MER. MER is just ROAS at a higher level. It's a more elaborate version of the same exact bull that ROAS is. And here's why. It doesn't tell you what to do. Say your MER is a three. What are you gonna do tomorrow? Should you spend more? Or is your MER a three because you just launched an email campaign that makes all of your marketing efforts look phenomenal and you got great results. And so, hey, we're gonna spend up into it and now all of our marketing crashes because, well, you had to know the context that we ran this thing and our CPA is actually this and our AOV is that and our LTV is this. If you already look at all those other numbers, why are you looking at MER and ROAS anyway? It's just a report card. It's only for the ego of the marketer. Your finance department doesn't care about it. You're fulfillment team doesn't care about it. Your customers don't care about it. And if you care about growing your business, you shouldn't care about it either.